I've been on Facebook since 2009. I've been on Instagram since 2009. I just received my first million views on both of them this year. You got to wait your turn, man. You got to wait. You can't always look at why they shining and why I'm not shining. Baby, you don't know what God got for you. Stop looking at other folks' plate and focus on yourself. Come on now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Benchmark, uh -huh. they're speaking the facts that you want to hear. The repertoire of the vision is clear. Diamonds glisten like a chandelier. You know what I'm here for, like Michelle Lynch. It clutch time, we do not flinch. Real brothers, we do not switch. Hit home runs with the right pitch. Who run the city? <gasps> what to do when they're hating on you? I feel like Kobe 2010. Taking an L, all I need is a win. When this is business, you know how they go. You're glad to see us now, it's on the grow. Yeah. Tune in now, gotta be in the know. Showtime, bitch, my butter blow. Yeah. 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 Yeah, welcome back. Welcome back to another episode of the Bitch Mob ENT Podcast. I got one of my favorite people ever that I've been on social media. Hilarious, could sing, talented. 1.5 million on TikTok, 26K on Instagram. I go by Big Mike is in the building. How you doing tonight? I'm doing good, man. It's a blessing to be here, and I'm honored for y'all to have me on here, man. Uh, no, nah, man. We appreciate you taking time out to hop on with us man you know super creative person um you have me cracking up all the time when i watch your videos for you how has your childhood shaped the content that you create today like your upbringing um you know with some of my videos like when i talk about cooking and food recipes i always mention like probably my uncle my aunts or my mom and my ancestors because like growing up with them you know i, I come from the old school they was born in like 1930s, you know, 50s, 40s, stuff like that. So just bringing the things they used to say to us and the recipes they use, it helps out my content a lot. You know what I'm saying? Like, especially certain things that they do. And it's just an honor that I got a chance to spend time with them to be able to listen to them stories, even at a young age when I wasn't supposed to. But, you know, it just helps out the content now because I say some of the things now since I'm an adult that they used to say when but I couldn't say it back then, but I definitely can say it now. Those be the ones where it's like, you <laughs> weren't supposed to be listening, you bet not yeah, listen I'm supposed to be listening, man. You get to that age, now you can uh, actually say those things. Um, no for you, I went back, all the way back to the beginning, uh, your first like ever YouTube video, and you were doing like inspirational, motivational yeah. things, which I thought those was, was good too. At some point, you transition into doing the content you're doing now. What, yeah. you know, what inspired that transition to be like, all right, I'm going to do the comedic, the singing, the videos, talking about food. What what was the transition for that for you? Um, when I first started my YouTube and got, like, serious, the crazy thing is I was already doing the funny, funny and the impersonations and singing. I just got rid of some old videos and just added those. Uh, and so so basically the inspirational videos and I, it's always been there because I've always been the type of person, motivational and all that. However, that came in the middle of me already doing the fun videos. Mm -hmm. However, I have been thinking basically I need to get back to that. Like, like give them everything. Don't just stop with one because the other one's going well, but give them everything. I agree completely. Like, because the first couple of videos I'm watching, I'm like, wait, why did he, I don't see these no more. Like, I, I get yeah. The comedy, the videos on the food, obviously those are doing numbers. But I think yeah. some stuff that you were sharing on a more deeper level will help even the masses more of like, yo, some people, it's not that they don't support you. It's what they choose and do at the time. Like some of the stuff you were saying was very relatable to any and yeah. everything. So yeah, definitely. I think for sure, pick it back up. Um, I think they'll receive it and accept it yeah. the same way that they're receiving the other videos. Especially this day time, man. You never know how your words can help somebody. Exactly. And you got the platform now, so people going to listen. You could. Listen. You got the platform, so people going to listen. For you, I checked out even the Apple Music. 
you have some music out, some singles, some EPs, you actually can sing. Most people, I don't know if they know that you on Apple Music. You you got some heat out there. Who are yeah. some of the inspirations in the music industry? Um, for me, my Michael Jackson would be Trey Songs. I love I've been loving Trey Songs since I saw him on B, you know, BT used to run the uh video specials, the shows in the AM. Mm -hmm. Like play different videos when videos had 106 and Park, TRL and all that. And then we just playing videos. And I saw him with Gerald Levert and just gotta make it. And I'm like, who was this guy, man? And I just I just fell in love with like how he do music and who he was. And I'm like, yeah, man, that's like that's my guy. So Trey Songs for one, I love Drake. Drake is the greatest rapper to me ever. I love Drake. I love Drake. I love I love Lil Wayne. I love Jay Z. I li I listen to L L Cool J. I love Boys to Men. It's it's just so many people like with singing. How I learned how to get my my tones and all that. I would sing all four parts of Boys to Men. Mm. I, I would sing all of Jodeci. I would sing all of Mint Condition. It's just I, I basically learned how to sing even like better from doing like groups because it's four part harmony, so you gotta listen, you gotta listen for it. So basically, but boys to men for sure, for sure. Like listening to their songs is just it got me going, especially one year. For you, was that so? Was that self taught, or did you like get lessons? Because a lot of people. Like the boys, the men, and you threw out a, a classic mint condition. People don't know about yeah. mint condition. You threw out them. A lot of people could hear it, but then to be able to, to sing the four parts, a lot of people can't do that. So was this self-taught or was this something like from family? How did you how were you able to actually do that though? Uh my my mom's side, they can sing. However, me singing, I've never been, I've never had vocal lessons. Never. Everything is self-taught. From being in my my home, just listening over and over and over, like I don't know if you remember the song "Love Like Honey" by Pretty Ricky, mm -hmm. when Plus came in with the high note. I practiced that high note for probably two years, and I kept trying to hit it. But now I can hit it effortlessly. Like it's just just constantly going and constantly listening and not giving up because certain notes, certain runs, and all that. And what I what I ever received was voice leggings. I would love it. I would love it to like. Tell me what I need to do better and help me become better. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, yeah, but listening to those guys is just self-talk. And I thank God for that, man. I think that's dope because I'll be listening time and time again. I can't hit those notes. My wife be telling me, all right, chill out. Like, you're not, you're not like that. So You probably you probably can, man. As a kid, yeah. If I actually focused on it, maybe, maybe, maybe. But yeah. I don't know. Um, you do the comedy aspect, too, and... For that, I've seen the impersonations. That was one of them. When I saw the impersonations, <laughs> I wasn't actually looking at my phone. I was yeah. scrolling, and I'm like, "Hold up!" Now, Bernie Mac is dead. Did he do a? Uh, <laughs> did he do an older a video that you know, like they put it out afterwards? Like, what is this for for you in that space of the comedy, the content creation, which is huge now, like Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, YouTube Shorts. Who is your inspiration in that content creation space? Um, for my content creations, man, like, um, I, I watch other content creators sometimes. Like, I love my, I don't know if you know my brother. He look, they confuse us. His name is Jariah. I got to check it out. Yeah, Jer I love Jariah. I love Otis Swag. I love Rolling Up K. I love Kimmy. I, you know, I love Nathan Centron. It's just, and a lot of these people I've came up with when we first started doing TikTok. I'm mm. pretty sure, you know, Kimmy's creations, like we came up together. I love our, our Alicia. It's just a bunch of those people that I've looked up to and been able to grow up with when it comes to social media. And Mr. Crying So Bad, like I love them people to death. Uh, what's my what's my brother's name? Uh, Lord have mercy. Daryl, I, I love them to death. Like they, they, they so funny, so... I get inspired by them. I never want to steal what they do, but I just get inspired. Like, these people are brilliant. Like, they're really brilliant. So just watching them, other content creators. And, you know, we all love Daisy Banks and, you know, Country Wayne and all of them. But it's like the people that I came up with, like, and I'm extremely proud of them as well. 
for doing so well they're doing. That's dope to always see people grow up with you in the space and both on all levels, like they're seeing the success that you're seeing also. Yeah. Within that, right? Um, the social media space for, for those our listeners, that's probably gonna want to know. Do you have a regular nine to five or is everything being covered with like social media and the music? Um, with me, I wear so many different hats, man. So even if I had a nine to five, I would still be doing things as far as like um promo or music or writing or like I said, motivational speaking, cameo videos. So it's multiple streams of income. And I th- I thank God for that. You know, so but as you know, God gets all the glory that to where that now the seeds that I planted a long time ago, that they starting to show now, like with all the different talents and all the different avenues I can go down to receive this, that, and this and that. So like this interview, like it's a blessing that my talents brought me here. Like that's how I look at it, man. Yeah, like it goes back to the story in the Bible where it says God gave certain people certain amount of talents. It's like what you did with them. Did you hide them and just not do anything with them or did you sure. exactly and it's like for you obviously you put in the work you put in the time and god gave it an increase but you had to put in the work at some point so sure. i think that's that's great and i think that's a good lesson to people that, that's watching that view this or listen to this like it wasn't overnight you've been putting in the work and being consistent and god saw your consistency and was like all right i can help yeah because yeah, i've been I've been on Facebook since 2009 and I've been on Instagram since 2009. I just received my first million views on both of them this year. Good. So from 2009 to 2023, I just received my first million views. That's why. So it's like, you just got to keep going, man. I think that, that, wow. The, the transition with that, because it's, with that being the case, 2009, 2023, at some point, I, I would like to think that you've dealt with doubts or second guessing. When those happen, how did you deal with those to actually keep going? Um, I prayed and I kept believing in myself. And whenever I was out in public and people just randomly give me compliments on, man, your videos are funny. I love you. Hey, I know you. It's just, that's what keep me going. Because somebody watching. You making somebody day. <laughs> somebody, man. So continue doing what you're doing, even though it's easier to give up. But you never give up today. You never know your blessing could come tomorrow, but you won't never know because you gave up today. That's that's all facts. That's, that's really, really facts. And I'm not obviously doing the comedy aspect or doing what you're doing, but that's always dope for me too. I know that feeling when I'm at the gym. I'm saying, yo, there's bench mob, the sports videos on it, like that, that hit different. Like you, yeah. you're doing it, but to hear that from somebody and sometimes even strangers, it just be like, wait, you you actually watch my stuff? Correct. Most definitely. I think that's still, I think that's also a good point of like staying in that humble spot of not be like, I made it. Like you took time out to actually watch my stuff. I'm forever thankful and grateful for that. So I think that's a great mindset you have. Yeah, man. Ain't no thing, man. Like I said, try to support people the best way that you can, man. And remind me humble because just like you got it today, it could be gone tomorrow. So it's like, hey, keep it going. People ain't read the story of Job. Go check out Job. That all, right. all facts. So 2009 to 2023. In this process now when you're in that creative process of like all right i'm gonna put this video out i'm editing this video do you know now like all right yeah this this one gonna hit this one gonna go viral they they won't like this one like do you have that to your point of drake drake just know the formula all right i'm gonna put this out yeah it's about to go super platinum like do you have man, that formula now man i have one thing i've learned since i've done social media for real what you think gonna go viral sometimes won't go viral. It ain't gonna lie to you, man. And what you don't think gonna go viral is going to go viral. Like, for example, I posted a video, and it got a nice amount of views, and I'm thinking, oh, I thought it was gonna do a little better than that, but the one that I didn't think was gonna do as well got over 600,000 views. So it's like, with stuff like that, man, like, you just gotta keep giving your content. You know, sometimes, you know, you can repost it, but you just gotta keep going. 
Because a lot of times you sit here and think, like, okay, I know this is gonna go viral. You'll get your feelings hurt. Because when yeah. it don't go, when it don't go viral, you're gonna become disappointed, you're gonna get discouraged. But you just gotta keep going. Don't do it. So many people wanna go viral. Just keep giving the world you, and eventually it's gonna be your turn. You gotta wait for your turn. You gotta wait for your turn because from 2009 to 2020, that's when I first started doing TikTok. It was way many people like doing content creating music or anything and they were shining and i like one you gotta be like one day my time gonna come but you can't be jealous you can't be mad you can't be jealous so when my stuff started popping off in 2020 and i hit a hundred thousand followers they deleted my page as soon as i hit a hundred thousand followers as soon as i hit it you've been banned so i came back and made the one that i'm on now and now we at 1.6 finna hit 1.7 i was 2 million followers and we finna hit 300 million uh, views when you type in my hashtag, I go by Big Mike. So it's like, yeah, man, well, your time gonna come. And I always look at it like this. Last year, who was the hottest TikToker? Pervo. And now who is the, one of the hottest TikTokers now? Keith Lee. You're, you gotta wait your turn, man. You gotta wait. You can't always look at why they shining and why I'm not shining. Baby, you don't know what God got for you. Stop looking at other folks' plate and focus on yourself. Come on now. Wait your turn. <laughs> you speaking a hundred percent facts right there, man. Wait, that that might be the title of the episode right here. Wait your wait your turn. That might be uh, stop being so patient, man. You so you feel like you better than them, and you might be better than a lot of people. But guess what? What God got for you is for you. That's what God got for them. Don't worry about them. Exactly. What God got for you is for you. Can't nobody stop it. Can't nobody get in between it. And the thing is that we sometimes forget. We be trying to play God and it'd be like, hey, yeah. pause. God be like, chill out. Yeah, trying to go with him. Like, I don't, I don't want to talk about that. Come on now. No, he don't want to talk about none of that, bro. He already got your story lined out. You may not agree with some of the things that he got for you, but whether it's next month, next year, or 10 years later, you're going to understand why he made you wait. Uh huh. Now, I mentioned your impersonations. Every single time you decide to do it, absolutely hilarious. <laughs> yeah, me and my wife break out laughing every time. How did you start doing impersonations? Was it the same type of thing with the music? You just kept listening and listening and practicing and practicing? Yeah, so most definitely. It was just constantly listening. It started off with Michael Jackson and then like DMX. I feel like DMX is the easiest one. That's the easiest one. You know, you ain't got to do them a little bit. You know, we love DMX and, you know, with Rick Ross and Bernie Mac. It just, it just came and it just, it was, it's all natural. Like it all came with work, but it was all natural. It's all self-talk, you know what I'm saying? Just gifts of God and I just went with it. I just started doing like love vo like voiceovers and skits with them. And then once I saw people start actually liking them, I'm like, all right, let me keep going then. Let me keep doing my thing with it, man. Like, cause it's something that you got to give the world something that, yeah, a lot of people may be doing what you're doing, but they ain't doing it like you. Mm -hmm. They doing the same. Yeah, yeah, we all go. We all go to Chick Fil A or Burger King and something. We ain't in the same car. <laughs> come on, now, come on, now. We they ain't doing it the same way you doing it. Come on now. So it's like, yes. like many different talents, man. That's why I was like, man, let me just get them this too. That's facts. How many, how many impersonations like do you have under your belt? I know you got the Bernie Mac, the DMX, the Michael Jackson. Like, how many do you have in total that you would say? I want to say Bernie. Michael, DMX, Rick Ross. You, you watch Family Guy? Yeah. Uh, Joe Swanson. Um, <laughs> Michael Blackson. And if it is somebody else, I don't know, but I'm gonna keep adding, I'm gonna keep adding to it. Hey, that that's a that's a nice start off right there. Joe Swanson. That's a yeah. How, how do you choose Joe? Like what made you choose Joe Swanson? Oh, I, I promise it's just like listening to him, and it was like, let me try this one day. And when I tried, I'm like, oh, that ain't that ain't half bad, man. When I did, I'm like, okay, I want I want to try to capitalize on Stewie. Oh yeah, Stewie will be uh, <laughs> that'd be something different if you you transition between Bernie and then going to Stewie. So that'd be yeah. It's like wait a minute, like how you doing all this? Yes, and like I said, it's something different. Real quick. How do you do that though? Like you could literally be mid sentence Bernie and then literally switch your voice into DMX, which is a whole different, whole different type of voice. Like they're not even 
they're not even similar. Like you said, DMX is more yelling and it's that. How do you transition? Man, well, stuff like they just, the crazy thing is when you when you talk like them, you got to somewhat think like them a little bit. Mm. You know, got to make sure all the mannerisms are right. Just like with the Rick Ross, you know, oh, you know, stuff like that. You know, you just got to get to it. And with DMX, you just know you got to, whatever you say, you got to yell. You just know that for a fact. Unless you're talking real calm, then it's going to elevate up. With Bernie, you know, Bernie, he going to say whatever comes to his mind. You know, Michael, it don't matter what you say is Michael. With Michael, it's just his voice. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like he says, like he said, taking your time with it. And you just got to realize whenever you do switch and transition, you got to think like them a little bit. So that's how it's so easy. And it's in the vocals too, man. Like it ain't exactly like singing, but you got to change the way you talking now. So it's like, yeah, man, it's just, like I said, just taking your time with it, thinking like them. But like I said, the one that's the most fun is going to get him his DMX because he just yelling. He yelling, no matter what he say. Where do you see yourself in five years? <laughs> um, Honestly, man, um, on some people's TV screens <laughs> and some t- on some music, very, very wealthy and living out my dreams and living out my childhood dreams, able to take care of my family, man, and being one of the biggest stars in the world. I wouldn't, I wouldn't think that wouldn't happen in five years. I wouldn't be surprised if in five years we see that you on the movie screen, you on. TV. I would not be surprised. Like you've been, cons- hey, you've been consistent from 2009 to 2023. I don't yeah. see you stopping now. So for sure, especially with another kid on the way. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure, for sure. All right, we're gonna end off the show. We call this segment the fourth quarter. What's right. your? Which is this is definitely we ask this to everybody, but being that you create content on food and if it looks good if it doesn't look good what is your go-to meal um i ain't gonna lie lately my favorite meal been what's that longhorn or uh, parmesan crusted chicken mm. and they got parmesan crusted mashed potatoes i love it and i'm lactose intolerant but we ain't gonna worry about that so it's like no i love that longhorn parmesan crusted chicken man that's just so fine oh my god Jesus Christ, it's a fact. I'm lactose, so I know what I know what's going on when I get ready to leave. <laughs> but right there. So no, um, let me get that food off your hands real quick. <laughs> who for you? And I, we might know the answer based off of what you you answered earlier. But who would be the dream person for you to actually make a make a record with? Jesus, um, the dream person. Crazy thing is, you would think it's Trey, but I would love to do something with Trey. I would love to do something with Drake because, like I said, he can rap or he can sing. We can go either way. So I would say right now it would probably be Drake. Got it. So for you, which you you kind of alluded to this, but you might have a different four. Your Mount Rushmore, your favorite four musical artists. Music? Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, Jesus Christ. Um, golly. Michael Jackson for sure. Golly, this hard. Michael, it's like I love Drake, but I'm not biased. Mm. I'm a fan. So, I, Michael, she's a little old school. I love the Isley Brothers. Mm, okay. I love the, I love a lot of old school music, man. I love Boys to Men for sure. Jesus. And somebody who I love, man, that they don't really talk about like that no more, Luther Vandross. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Luther I, haven't, I haven't heard Luther come up in conversations as much anymore. Just like Gerald LeBert. Like, come on now, hold on now. Like he's just them heavy hitters, man. Yeah, Luther was that guy. People, hey, if you watching this and you don't know who Luther is, go check out we got YouTube University. Go check that out right now. Boy, them boys something special, man. For your Mount Rushmore of comedians. You know, for sure, Bernie. Bernie's on there. For, if ain't nobody else, Bernie's on there. He's number one. Bernie, uh, I love I love Mike Elps. Dude's so funny to me. I love Mike Elps. Um, Kevin Hart mm-hmm. and Cat Williams. Ooh. Now, imagine them on tour. That would be... 
<laughs> like, cause you know, we grew up, we know Cat was, Cat was that guy. Like we grew up on him, especially with the Chronicles and all this, like he comes again. I'm like, yeah, I love it. Like, dude, funny, man. Cat, you got Mike Epson, yeah. If they was on tour, if they did like Kings of Comedy with them, right? So <laughs> sold out for you. We're gonna end off with this one. What are your five favorite movies? Oh, uh, see, this one y'all be giving me because you know the crazy thing is, I'm not really a movie watcher. That's weird. Ain't it? I'm not even really a movie watcher. The, ba- the most thing I have watched in my whole entire life, I'm in love and obsessed with wrestling. Mm, okay. I'm in love with WWE, WCW, ECW. Man, what's that? AW, any wrestling, you know what I'm saying? Even back in the day, you know, AWA, NWA, like stuff like that, man. It's just wrestling. I love wrestling. Okay, and let's we- switch it then. Give me your five favorite wrestlers then. Ah! <laughs> Let me see what's going on. For one, of my favorite guy of all time is The Rock. Okay. But the greatest wrestler I have ever seen with reactions and how he did things, and I feel like I won't ever see that again, is Stone Cold Steve Austin. That yes, is the of all time to me. I love Eddie Guerrero. Mm-hmm. I love AJ Styles. And my last one, the wrestler, my one of my favorites, and I know some of the wrestling world would not agree with this. I love Chris Benoit. Mm, okay. As a as a wrestler, as a technical wrestler, like, oh my God. Like I love it to do. Oh man. Look, thank you for taking time out. <laughs> That's another episode of the Bench Mob ENT. Y'all already know the house rules. Make sure y'all follow, like, subscribe. We're on all streaming platforms. We're on YouTube. Check us out. Before we end it off, is it possible we can get you doing some insp- and the impersonation before before we close? Uh, the crazy thing is, man, like, I don't know if you can hear my voice. Like, I'm sick at the moment. We appreciate even the more that you hopped on. Yeah, for sure. Like, I'm sick at the moment, but it's like, I got you. I got you. Like, let me get over the sickness, and I, I promise I got you. Hey, let us know whenever you want to come back on. This is your home podcast. If I agree you, you want to try something out new, you can hop on the bench mod any and every time for sure. Thank you, man. Thank you so much, brother. Appreciate you hopping on.